Three, two, one, zero. Mission. Lift off. Top nine with the DART mission. On the way for humanity's first ever planetary defense test mission. A NASA spacecraft is on a mission to test technology that could defend planet Earth in the future. The spacecraft will deliberately crash into an asteroid to see if it can change its path. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News senior space analyst Bill Harwood. Bill, great to see you. What a pretty Christmas tree you have behind you. Um, you. I want to, you know, start off by just uh, saying that there's a lot of questions I think our viewers might have about this technology. And two NASA astronauts tried to demonstrate how the DART mission will work with, of all things, a pillow fight in microgravity. I want to play that for our viewers first. So what I'll do, Shane is going to be the asteroid, um, and I'm going to be the NASA DART mission. Oh, this CTB, more exactly, is going to be a spacecraft. Um, I'm going to try to throw it, and we'll look at the effect of that mass coming at him and the kinetic energy transfer from the CTB to Shane. Shane will be perfectly stable. <laughs> it's not an easy task. You ready? All right, here it comes. <laughs> I've redirected Shane successfully. <laughs> Pretty good. It looks like they're having a lot of fun up there in space trying to demonstrate the very basic principles of physics behind this. What else do we need to know about this mission, Bill? Well, you know, it's one of those things that, that we, when we talk about it, we always say the odds of an asteroid hitting the Earth are pretty low in any given year, but the consequences can be extreme. You know, a 150-foot-wide asteroid hit out in Arizona way back in the past, Meteor Crater. Lots of people have seen pictures of that. That was just 150 feet or so across. So imagine a body 500 feet across coming down near a populated area. That would be devastating on an, on an epic scale. Uh, so I think NASA believes it makes sense to start thinking about, now that we have some technology, what would we need to do to deflect an asteroid on a collision course with Earth? And that's what the DART mission is all about. It's a proof of concept. They're testing the feasibility of deflecting an asteroid that might one day pose a threat. As you say, the they're, NASA's trying to uh, analyze the the very small risk um, or the possibility with uh, with the potential very large implications. What really prompted NASA to come up with this test? Well, you know, there are thousands of asteroids in the solar, millions actually, but thousands of asteroids that could theoretically cross the path of Earth's orbit. And like I said, the big giant asteroids, the, the dinosaur killers we're all familiar with, things that are a kilometer or more across, they know where most of those are. But some of these smaller bodies, the 500 foot across kind of asteroids, those sorts of things, a lot of those we don't know where they are. Uh, so the idea is if you ever spot one coming, what would you do about it? And that's what the DART mission is about. They're testing this technology that if it works, uh, it'll at least put one tool in the toolbox that might be available down the road if you ever needed it. You know, you might not think a small asteroid poses a big threat. It might not wipe out, you know, humanity. Uh, but certainly if it hit in New England, for example, or something like that, it would be devastating. These things come in at extreme velocities and the energy released is titanic. Uh, so you want to do whatever you can to keep that from happening. And the technique they're testing right now is something that might, in fact, help with that. And uh, obviously, it's taking place very far away from Earth. Uh, so we actually have to wait until next year to see the crash. Right. How will scientists at NASA interpret the data once they have it? Well, first of all, you're right. They are very far away. And this asteroid is extremely harmless. There's no way it could ever come to Earth. That's why it makes a good test subject. But the asteroid actually is a small moon. It's a tiny asteroid that's circling a larger asteroid. And the reason they chose this double asteroid system is they've been studying it for years. They've been timing how long it takes the little asteroid to go around the parent body, and they know that very accurately. It's about 11 hours and 55 minutes. So the idea is if you hit the, the smaller asteroid with the dark spacecraft, by timing the asteroid's uh, path around the moon, around the asteroid after that, It'll change slightly, and by analyzing how much that orbital time changes, they'll know exactly what impact, so to speak, uh, the DART mission had. So it's a great place to test something like this because they can directly measure the results. 
Nice play on the word impact, Bill. (laughs) While I have you, I want to I want to ask about the James Webb Space Telescope. This is the largest and most powerful space telescope ever built. What are scientists hoping to learn from it? You know, it's also the most expensive uh, space mission, science mission ever built at nearly $10 billion. You know, this is going to succeed the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, Hubble looks in the visible portion of the spectrum. You see visible light just like you and I do. But if you want to capture light from the birth of the universe, you need an infrared telescope. And that's what the James Webb is. It's designed to capture light that's been stretched out by the expansion of the universe over the past 13.8 billion years into the infrared portion of the spectrum. And that's what this telescope is going to go look for. They hope to see the very first generation of stars and galaxies that formed in the wake of the Big Bang. I mean, if you think about that, uh, that's, that's almost hard to imagine having the capability to, in a sense, look that far back in time, almost to the beginning. Uh, And so they hope to learn a lot about how stars form, how galaxies form, uh, where these supermassive black holes that we see at the cores of many galaxies, how did they evolve? Where did they come from? Uh, So James Webb, if it works, uh, will really be a revolutionary instrument. And I, I only say if it works in quote marks like that because it's extraordinarily complicated. A lot of things have to go right for this telescope to work. And I think there's a lot of fingers crossed out there as they get ready to launch. Only the biggest questions of, uh, of humanity and our understanding of the universe, right? No big deal. Um, actually, uh, speaking of just logistics, NASA pushed the launch date back by four days. What happened with that, Bill? Yeah, you know, they got it down in French Guiana in Peru, where the European Space Agency is going to launch this telescope on an Ariane 5 rocket. The Europeans are launching it as part of their contribution to the program. That means NASA doesn't have to buy a rocket. The Europeans are doing it. And while they were processing the spacecraft for launch, they had an incident. They're calling it a a, a high-tension attachment fixture that would be used to help hold the telescope to the rocket. It suddenly came loose. And it kind of shook the telescope. And this thing is so fragile, uh, they really wanted to make absolutely sure that that vibration, that unexpected shaking, uh, didn't cause any problems. They looked at it. They decided it didn't. And like you said, it delayed the launch four days. Right now, it's on December the 22nd. And everyone's hoping it gets up there before Christmas. What a Christmas present for the astronomers. What a Christmas present for us all. Bill, always a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.